Hey everyone, Zephyr here. Today we are building a family home in The Sims 2. I think this is going to end up being one of my longer speed builds because this build took me quite a while to make and it's quite big by my standards. The upstairs of the build has four bedrooms and there's an office on the main floor that could be converted into a bedroom if my Sims needed it to be a bedroom. But I was really trying to go for like upper middle class suburban vibes with this house and it's something that I feel like I don't do all that often. Often, I feel like other Sims YouTubers kind of crank out one of these big builds every three days and I'm over here with my like, little tiny builds like maybe once a week if you're lucky but I felt like trying to fit in with the cool kids this week and try to build something a little bit more grandiose so here we are. I imagine that a family of five lives here, the parents, a teenage daughter, a nine or ten year old son, and a baby. I imagine that the parents have like very normal day jobs, but they are also very like artsy and crafty on the side. This house actually has a garage, which you can make functional garages in The Sims 2. And in that garage, there's like different workbenches that the parents can like work on and you know, do their little crafty activities on and I, I love that. But I guess we shouldn't exactly get too far ahead of ourselves and describe the whole build when we're just watching the exterior be made right now because I'm sitting here kind of like spoiling the video for you at this point, right? It's kind of like the time where I was just sitting down at work, you know, minding my own business. I think it was on my break or I was just like at the end of my shift and I was waiting for my drive to come pick me up. This, this was years ago in my old job. My coworker comes up next to me and we start talking, blah, 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 right? And I say, I, I don't know how it came up in conversation, but I said I wanted to watch a specific movie. I think she had said she had just seen it in theaters and I said, oh, I want to watch that. The movie was The Purge, okay? Nothing too exciting, like not a life-changing movie, but a movie I wanted to see. She then proceeds to tell me in great detail the whole entire plot of the movie. Like, every major spoiler there could be, what happens from the beginning to the end. So, I, I didn't watch the movie for years after that because it was like, what's the point? I already know the plot. So, I, I don't want to give you that same experience in the Sim Speed build, you know? Speaking of movies, though, I watched Beetlejuice for the first time in my life the other day. And I don't know why I spent the majority of my life avoiding it because I've always heard good things about it and it's a movie totally up my alley. I, I love like horror movies that also kind of like rely on comedy, you know? And Beetlejuice, I, I think, is more of a comedy than horror, but I, I see it as one of those movies that could be a good introduction to horror movies for, like, younger people. Now, this is when I should actually, like, sit here as a bit and talk about the whole entire plot of the movie, because it'd be kind of funny after I complained that somebody did that to me, but I'm not going to do that. Don't worry. I, I won't spoil a 40-year-old movie for you. It's not going to happen on this channel. But I will say I'm a huge fan of the Scream franchise and Beetlejuice kind of gives me similar vibes just because of the comedy aspect of it. Uh, so if you're a fan of those movies and never watched Beetlejuice, I definitely recommend giving it a shot. I haven't seen Beetlejuice Beetlejuice, the sequel, but I intend on doing that now as long as my coworker doesn't show up in my comments and try to tell me the whole plot of the movie, I'm good. I do have a question though. Have any of you guys seen the movie, the, the sequel? Is it good? That's all I want to know. You, you don't have to, like, tell me the whole plot of the movie. Also, if you have any recommendations for horror movies that are good and not too heavily graphic, I would love to hear them because it's October and I'm in the mood to watch spooky things. Like, not gory things, but spooky things. I absolutely hate it when horror movies just rely on gore, so... That is not something that I'm looking to watch, you know? Like, currently a movie is being promoted a lot on my TikTok, and it's probably because I watched, like, one video about the movie, and now, like, the next 30 videos have to be about the movie for whatever reason, because that is how the algorithm works now. However, I'm, I'm just seeing videos about it a lot. So the third Terrifier movie is coming out, right? And I have no interest watching Terrifier. I hear it's like really gory and like the mo movie's just like mainly gore 
and uh, I just don't have interest in that. Apparently, the third one is so bad, and this could just be a marketing technique, but they're just hyping up the fact that people are fainting in theaters and, like, leaving the movie early because it's, like, too much, and it's, like, and I'm failing to see how that's appealing to people at all. I long for the days of inoffensive horror movies, like Halloween. Like, yeah, there's a little bit of gore, um, <laughs> that people get killed, but, like, it, they're, they're not gory for the sake of being gory. Like, they are scary in other ways. And, I don't know. I mean, maybe there, maybe there's people out there that love gore and just get terrified of it. But I, I feel like a movie is more effective as a horror movie if it scares you in the, like, oh, wow, this is spooky kind of way. And not, like, the, ew, this is disgusting kind of way, you know? Speaking of horror, I know there's, like, a little kind of cross-community of sims players and dead by daylight players and i just wanted to say i'm a part of that community and i recently played the diary of frank stone it's set in the dead by daylight universe and it's similar to like a until dawn style game highly recommend it i had such a good time playing it um this isn't a spoiler but i had only one character make it to the end of the game and then I watched my friend live stream it and he had another character make it to the end of the game like only one but like there's more possibilities like this game has like a ton of different endings I was mad because two of my characters technically should have survived and the only reason one of them died in my playthrough was because I failed a quick time event and quick time events are like when you have to press a series of buttons in order to progress through the game and since I failed pressing the series of buttons, I got the negative consequence of this, and my character died, and I was so mad. But that's all I'm gonna say. I'm not gonna sit here and, you know, explain the whole plot of the game to you. I'm not gonna do what my coworker did to me that one day, like, over ten years ago. Like, I'm still mad about that, and now that I'm on my soapbox about it, I think I ranted about it in the speed build before, but, like... I'll probably rant about it again because I, I couldn't believe it. It was unbelievable. Like, why would you do that to me? And I guess it could have been like, hey, shut up. I want to watch this movie. I, I don't need to hear the whole plot. But that felt rude to me. I'm Canadian. I, I can't. I had to sit there and listen and act interested. I like to imagine that this house is not a unique little snowflake. It's a part of a neighborhood that is filled with homes that look incredibly similar to this home. I see a lot of people hating on these kinds of neighborhoods, but, like, I kind of see the appeal of them. Like, it's it's kind of, like, aesthetic for me. I think my problem is I literally romanticize, like, every living situation ever. I romanticize, like, country living. I romanticize the suburbs, like, this build would be in. I romanticize, like, downtown city living like everything seems appealing to me and is beautiful in its own way so even like you know McMansion hell uh is appealing to me maybe I'm just like easy to impress but I find beauty in everything and you know there's some neighborhoods out there that have homes that look incredibly similar to each other and I think they could be nice looking too and I don't think there's anything wrong with trying to assimilate that in my sims game We'll talk about the build for a bit. I guess that was a good segue. I was kind of talking about the build, just in a broader sense, but I guess now we are going into the specifics. Like I said, I'm going for a very suburban family home vibe here. Here I am just trying to figure out the outside of the build first, and I do this without even thinking about the floor plan. I, I don't know if I do this often, but sometimes it leads to me being lost and confused inside my builds, and... Maybe I don't necessarily recommend that, but also I think it's kind of fun. Like, you work with the shell you're, I was going to say given, but that you, that you give yourself. It's like one of those, like, Sims YouTuber shell challenges, uh, but you just made it yourself. So maybe, maybe I do recommend just working on the shell of the build first and then figuring out the floor plan later. Like, that that's a problem for future me, and I, I think that's a good way to uh, build things in this game. In a moment here, we're going to be starting figuring out the layout of the rooms on the main floor here. I'm always like weirdly self-conscious when I do my layouts because of one TikTok comment I got like years ago at this point where somebody was insulting the fact that the front door of my Sims build opened up into the kitchen of the build. 
and they were going on about how it wasn't realistic, blah, 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 blah. And it kind of hurt my feelings. But meanwhile, I was literally sitting in a home where the front door opened up into the kitchen. I, I don't think it's that scandalous of an idea. That being said, I do really enjoy how this build turned out. I feel like the layout makes sense. I haven't play tested this build yet, and the kitchen and dining room of this house are kind of like on opposite ends of the first floor. So I'm kind of thinking that Sims won't go to the dining room table to eat. However, I really like the layout of this, and I, I was willing to risk that problem. I'll play test it before I put this thing up for download, and if it's an issue, I'll, I'll just, you know, write down that it's an issue on the post, and you can fix it yourselves. I don't know. This is something I don't want to change because I really like how the kitchen and dining room turned out in this build. Like, if it is an issue, I feel like if you just knock down a couple of walls, you can still make it look nice and Sims will actually go there and eat their food. But we'll see. We'll see. It's not a problem right yet. We're going to deal with it later. But if you didn't already know, I do upload most of my builds for free on my Patreon down below. That makes it sound like I'm charging for some of my builds. I don't charge for some of my builds. I All my builds are free, but it's just I don't upload every single build. And it, yeah, it's linked down below on my Patreon if you would like to download them. Like literally, if you go on Etsy and like search Sims builds or even like Sims, there's people out there trying to charge for their Sims builds, like custom Sims builds for people or custom Sims for people. And I find that a little bit crazy. Like I get you want to be paid for your work or whatever, but um, I, I just can't justify charging for a Sims build. Like, I don't know. It seems icky to me. And maybe that makes me a little hypocritical because I saw a Reddit post today and it was like on the subreddit unpopular opinions or whatever. So uh, I'm not sure if my opinion is popular. Like I, I know it's popular for my uh, Sims side of this little uh, tangent, but I don't know if it's popular for the other side of the tangent, which is the person on Reddit doesn't believe that haircuts should be more than $50. And I kind of disagree. The problem is it was a heavily uploaded post in the subreddit, uh, which tends to make it a more popular opinion when it's heavily upvoted, so it's not particularly really an unpopular opinion. The, the subreddit is a mess. Like, Reddit is a mess. Uh, whatever, I'm not going to get into Reddit right now. But the poster was saying that he doesn't believe that haircuts sh should be more than $50. And I kind of disagree because to me, like cutting hair is an art form and I am perfectly fine going to someone and spending $100 on my hair. Because to me personally, like haircutting is like a luxury service. And if I wanted it done for free, I'd do it myself. Like, okay, like <laughs> I, I want to pay somebody that's good at their job a fair price to get the hairstyle I want. And today's market is like unbelievable anyway. Like I'm willing to spend that amount on my hair like once every like four or five months. Because like, you know, the the hairstylists are artists. They're constantly picking up new skills and, you know, figuring out their craft. Um, it, it's something that I don't want to put the effort into to try to do on my own because I know I would botch my hair. So I would rather a professional do it. And I'm willing to pay the price for that. And I guess maybe these people selling sim stuff on Etsy have that attitude too. But, um, I don't know. It just seems different to me. Like, I, I kind of get where they're coming from. I always try to, like, see where the other sides of this kind of issue are coming from. But it's just, I, I don't agree with the sim side of it, you know? Especially, like, th these people are mainly sims 4 builders, right? And the gallery has, like thousands upon thousands of like builds and sims that you could just you know download and make your own like why are you paying someone to make you a sim like what are you doing and people can do what they want with their money it's just it just seems weird to me but trying to get into the mindset of these people i think they think in a similar way as i do when it comes to hairstylists like they don't want to put in the effort of making these builds or making this custom sim. They want somebody else to do it because they have a vision in their mind. They're just not sure if they can execute it. So I kind of get where they're coming from. Am I ever going to charge for a sims build? No. Um, that's where I stand on it.
I really wanted to put a fireplace in this house. I feel like it would have been cute. It would have been cozy, but like I couldn't find the space for it. So it didn't happen. But you know what is going to happen soon? The Sims 4 Life and Death, the expansion pack. And I have some thoughts on it. And they're positive thoughts. You're not going to a snarky little Zephyr rant this video. I'm in my positive Sims 4 era right now, okay? So the first thing I noticed when watching the trailer is all the adult Sims are hot. Who made those Sims? I, I don't think it was EA. Somebody talented made those Sims. I'm not saying EA isn't talented, but sometimes the Sims 4 townies can look kind of questionable. But, like, every Sim in this trailer is hot and, like, realistic looking and not too, like, out there, right? And I don't know. I First of all, love that. Second thoughts. I'm down for a gameplay inspired pack. And what I mean by that is, like, a story-driven gameplay pack because I think it actually fits well with The Sims 4. When Strangerville came out, I gobbled that shit up. It was, like, the most fun I've had playing The Sims 4 in a while. Same thing, really, with um, Realm of Magic. It's not really, like, as story-driven, but, like, loved it. And I'm getting the same vibes from Life and Death, which is exciting to me. Like, I really just want to make a sim and explore that pack. It, like, and the idea of my sims being able to have funerals and stuff is exciting too. And I feel like EA is genuinely trying. I'm not trying to, like, lick their boots right now or whatever, but, like, I, I feel like they are trying. I'm not going to sit here and make a clickbaity. Uh, the Sims 4 is awful video when, like... I genuinely think they are trying to do better. I would be disappointed if they did this pack and didn't reference all of Spectre and Nervous Subject and the Grim Reaper. Like, if they don't make any references to that at all, I'll be kind of upset. There's some people who are saying that the actual cover art of the pack itself features Olive and Nervous, and yeah, these sims do kind of look like Olive and Nervous, but I'm not getting my hopes up just yet. I, I don't know if they're going to include them. I wish they kind of like hinted at it in the trailer because I really like it when The Sims 4 references the older games and the fact that they're kind of ignored in the trailer is kind of upsetting to me, like Olive and Nervous specifically, because I feel like their story fits so well into this pack. If you didn't already know, and I, I guess people could technically kind of interpret their story different, but this is how I interpret it. Olive is basically a serial killer in The Sims 2, okay? But there's a reason why she kills Sims, and that is because she wants to reach out to her lover, the Grim Reaper. Like, I think what happened was, like, her first husband died, or I I'm not really interested in, like, looking at the lore right now. I'm just going from memory. But her first husband died. She tracked down the Grim Reaper to, like, you know, be like, what the fuck, Grim? Like, w why is this happening? And they ended up falling in love, woohooing, and she became pregnant with Nervous Subject, their son. And you cannot tell me that this relationship... It's not going to be featured in The Sims 4. I get it's a different timeline. I get it. I, but I, I just, I feel like this thing transcends time and space. I feel like they need to be referenced in this pack. I don't feel like the Grim Reaper would be, you know, doing all these shenanigans that he's doing in this life and death expansion pack without thinking about his uh, human serial killer thing situationship even like I feel like that shit like sticks with you like and I'd be disappointed if EA just kind of like scrapped them you know I really like how this kitchen turned out by the way I have an issue when it comes to sims kitchens where I always make them kind of small and this is kind of like a mid-sized kitchen and I was proud of myself like it's a decent sized kitchen like the majority of my kitchens in my sims builds are glorified kitchenettes even in buildings where it has no business being a kitchenette, but I'm trying to make an effort to give my sims more counter space because that's what people in real life search for. They want counter space. They want room in their kitchen to cook. So I, I think this kitchen is a nice size kitchen and I think it fits this house really well. 
Also, I do need to complain a little bit in this video, but it's not about The Sims. It's about YouTubers. And it's not even about Sims YouTubers. It's just about YouTubers as a whole. It's about marketing as a whole, even. And I'm not even saying that YouTubers are stupid for using this technique. Like, it's smart. It just bothers me specifically. But I really don't like it when YouTubers tease a video that's gonna be coming out in like two weeks and and they upload like a little teaser video. Like, what are you doing? I, I get it's to build hype, get people excited, you know, get people to have their eyes on your channel. Maybe go back and like watch like some older videos, you know, to um, get ready for the new video that's coming because you only upload like four times a year. I just hate it when they do it. Like, I, I get it builds anticipation and it's a good thing. It's just, I, I am very impatient. Once you tease a video to me, I get excited. And then, like, the next couple days, I'm, like, super excited for that video. But then the next couple days after that, I, I just get disappointed that I can't watch the video and that you teased it so early and I'm just sitting here with no video to watch, feeling sad. And then by the time the video actually gets uploaded, I kind of forget about it and I might not watch it for a week. Like, or I, I don't watch it for a week out of spite because I'm angry at you. And it's like, it's only a me problem probably. People probably appreciate the previews and stuff. Like, people literally, literally subscribe to other people's Patreons just so they could get previews of upcoming videos or whatever. But, um... Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I just, I don't like previews. I, I don't like teasers. Just show me the stuff. Show me the whole video. Like, I don't know. I'm impatient. <laughs> so here's my promise. I'm not going to upload any teasers of any of my videos ever because it bothers me and I, I don't want to bother other people. Like, I, I might say, oh, I'm working on this video, but I, I'm not going to show you like a little clip of the video or try to like build anticipation through a video and you know, not deliver my content for like two weeks because that is just annoying and I don't want to do that. Also, half the time I finish the video, like the day I upload it. So, um, I don't really have time to build anticipation when I just finish it and upload it, I guess. I mean, I could like try to build anticipation when I'm like in the middle of editing, but like, I, I, who has time for that? So here we are working on the dining room. Um, you're going to see me place down a huge bookcase in this room. And technically, it's going to stay. But I do remove the bookcase and I replace it with another bookcase that looks the same, except it's a two-sided bookcase. So the bookcase in the dining room and the bookcase in the office are going to be one of those like revolving door, secret door bookcases. And I just think it's a nice little cute detail. Like I imagine that this is a detail that they show their friends uh, when they invite them over. Like look at this cute little feature in my home. Um, it's one of those novelty things. Like, you know, the kids would definitely go viral showing it off on their TikTok pages. Oh, I thought I'd give you guys a little Bumble BFF update because it's not going good, besties. Like, it's it's not. In fact, I recently hid my profile so it's not even accessible to anyone because I'm just kind of, like, exhausted by the app. Like, I haven't been on dating apps in, like, years, right? But it was, like, easier to talk to people on those apps than trying to make friends on a similar app, right? I, I find people are, like, for whatever reason, super, super picky on Bumble BFF. Like, you say one wrong thing and you're done, um, which is weird because, like, I, I feel like it, it's not even, like, scandalous things. Like, you, you say you're into, like, crochet and suddenly they don't want to talk to you anymore. Like, after asking you what you are into, like, it, ugh, I, I don't know. Um, I feel like they try to put their fr friendships into, like, categories that, um, friendships sh should not be in. And, like, obviously nobody is entitled to friendships or whatever. But I just, I, I feel like people are so picky. Uh, I like having a diverse friend group, like, who have different interests than me. But I feel like Bumble BFF, they're, like, searching for something in particular, which is, like, valid, but it's also, like, 
exhausting. Like, tell me why me and this one girl, like, literally talked for weeks and had plans to, like, meet up and then just one day out of the blue, she's like, yeah, this isn't what I'm looking for. I wish you the best and then blocked me immediately. Like, obviously she has the right to do that, but, like, what, what, what's even wrong? What happened? Like, we were so excited to meet each other and talk, and now all of a sudden it's like, oh, you're not what I'm looking for? Okay. Um, I'm just not that picky when it comes to friends, and I don't get the mindset of being picky when it comes to friends. Like, I get not being friends with someone because you don't share their values or whatever, but I feel like I attract people who, like, share similar values to me, and that has never been the issue. It's just, I don't know. I, I, my feelings were hurt, okay? I'm gonna say it. My feelings were hurt, and that's why I'm complaining. Like, I'd rather you just ghost me if it wasn't the vibe, you know? Like, my profile on there makes it very obvious of who I am and what I'm looking for, I, I think, anyway. And uh, if you just don't feel like you're gonna vibe with me, ghost me. Don't, like, string me along, even as a friend. Like, I... I I thought I was done with that type of thing when I, you know, met my boyfriend and now I don't have to date people, but now I'm trying to, like, meet friends and people do the same shit, like, to what I feel is a worse degree. It's just exhausting. People are exhausting. I, it's a lesson I need to learn. People are just tiring and I, I guess I'll click with the right people and I won't click with other people and that's fine. Anyway, we are just finishing the downstairs of the build right now. We're going to be finishing up the garage as well, which is exciting. There's like a little toy bench in there. I imagine that one of the parents makes toys as a hobby. Like, I, I think they have like a normal day job, but th they like their crafty hobbies too. Maybe they are trying to start a toy business, but you know, you, you need to pay the bills so they have a regular job as well. Now, I'm struggling to come up with like little stories of things that happened recently to tell you guys because I haven't really been out of the house much, but I have been scrolling through social media a lot and there is something I stumbled across which I think would be kind of funny to do with you guys in the middle of this video. So there's this trend called 36 questions to fall in love. And it's basically this thing you're supposed to do with your romantic partner that's supposed to, like, deepen your connection or whatever. And it's kind of, you know, being talked about on TikTok at the moment. So I thought we'd go through the list of questions and, you know, deepen our connection with each other. As platonically as possible. There might be some questions I skip. I might not be able to do all the questions in this video, but I figured it'd be kind of like a fun thing to do. Question number one. Given the choice of anyone in the world, whom would you want as a dinner guest? I feel like my first initial thought is like Taylor Swift because I love her, but then I, I just feel like I'd be intimidated. Um, I, I don't feel like we have a lot of like similarities when it comes to our interests. I mean, like we could talk about Grey's Anatomy or something and, and she cooks and I'd be intimidated to cook for her because like I, I don't know what I'm doing. So I feel like I'd want to go kind of down to earth a little bit and maybe choose a YouTuber and I don't want to like mention any YouTubers um on here because that'd be weird. I, I don't want to like, you know, be like, oh, I want this specific YouTuber in my house so I could cook dinner for them. Like th that's weird, but I'd want somebody with like similar interests to me and th th that's all I'm, lo I'm looking for friends, okay? That, that That's what I want. That's my answer. Question number two, would you like to be famous and in what way? I wouldn't necessarily want to be famous. I'd want what I want, and I joked about it before, but like the joke is rooted in reality. I want to be kind of known in the Sims community. That sounds cringe, but ever since I was like 12 years old, I wanted to, you know, post Sims content online, and I did post Sims content online, hoping to become Sim community famous, um, and that goal has not really left me, honestly, if we're being completely honest with ourselves here, um, yeah, it's still a thing, I mean, I'm posting YouTube videos on YouTube, when you do that, you hope to become successful, right? Like, it, it's not something people talk about a lot, but it, it's it's the truth. Number three, before making a telephone call, do you ever rehearse what you're gonna say? 
Why? Okay, I'm like a bottle of social anxiety. Like, I rehearse my whole day before it happens. Like, I literally cannot fathom people who don't do that and just go about their day with like, without an ounce of anxiety. That's crazy to me. Number four, what would constitute a perfect day for you? The absolute perfect day for me would be a nice, good breakfast in the morning, spending the day with my boyfriend, you know, some of it out and about, going to restaurants or other little activities, and then having a night in and watching a movie or something. That's the perfect day. I I don't ask for much. Halifax, which is where my boyfriend lives, has a nice, like, waterfront, a nice little walk there at some point during the day. Just gets the serotonin going for me, so I would want to include that, too. Number five, when did you last sing for yourself? To someone else? I was, like, randomly singing to myself, like, when I was watching wrestling last night. Um, there was a song stuck in my head, I'm not even sure what, probably just a TikTok sound, and I was just kind of, like, singing it to myself while watching TV. I... I, I don't even know it. Oh, that stupid like AI meow 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 song. Um, I, I think it was that. And there's like a couple problems with that. Like one, I can't sing at all. And the main problem is the fact that it was AI and I don't support AI trying to like steal things from artists. So um, it was stuck in my head though. Those, those AI like cat videos like pop up on my For You page and I can't avoid them and it's a problem and the the song got stuck in my head. Like, I will clarify that I do think there's a difference between maybe kind of playing around with AI art yourself and, um, you know, just never putting it out into the world because it's not yours. Like, I do kind of think that's morally more fine because sometimes you're curious, like I'm curious, I've played with it before. But when you're, like, actively putting it out into the world, I, I think that's kind of, like, morally problematic. And the last time I sang for someone else was definitely not on purpose. It's not something that I tried to do. Uh, it would be people, like, hearing me when I don't want them to hear me uh, would be the last time it happened. And I don't want to know when that happened. Number seven, do you have a secret hunch about how you will die? No. Who does? That's weird. Like, why would you think about that? No. Number nine, for what in your life do you feel most grateful? I'm grateful that I was born in Atlanta, Canada. The weather here is, um, not extreme. Seeing all the, like, scary stuff happening with hurricanes down in the southern United States and beyond is scary to me. Sometimes we get, like, tail end of hurricanes here, but we don't normally get anything too bad. And it's a relatively safe spot to live, and I'm incredibly privilege for that. So that's what I'm grateful about. Oh, I accidentally skipped one I wanted to answer. Number six, if you were able to live to the age of 90 and retain either the mind or body of a 30 year old for the last 60 years of your life, which would you want? I I feel like the actual like only answer here would be the mind. Like the idea of dementia or Alzheimer's is like scary to me and it like runs in the family, right? And if I had a chance to like you know, completely be sure it wasn't going to happen to me, I'd take it. Like, I I don't care what I look like. I'd I'd rather just, you know, know I'm living to at least 90 with my brain still intact. Number 13, if a crystal ball could tell you the truth about yourself, your life, the future, or anything else, what would you want to know? I think I would just want to know what happens when you die. I'd want to know if, like, reincarnation is a thing. I'd want to know what it feels like to pass on. If it's just like a, you know, like a light switch going off and then you're gone or if there's like something more to it. I I just want to know that. I like to be prepared, okay? Like I I like to rehearse phone calls or whatever. I need to like rehearse the idea of moving on from this, you know, mortal coil. Okay, that was pretty intense. Let's change the subject. We don't have time to unpack all of that. But anyway, those are my answers to those questions. Some of them anyway. I hope you're in love with me now, platonically. If you are, definitely hit the subscribe button if you're not already. I did think of another little story to tell you guys that's fairly exciting, at least to me anyway. Uh, Fairly exciting in the nerdy sense. I played my first ever tabletop RPG the other day. I've never done it before, and apparently I did a good job. I got good feedback from the other people playing the game with me. 
But basically, we were p- playing an RPG based off of the movie Alien, and my character was actually the guy who flipped burgers on the ship. His name is Greg, and he's Greg from Ship Burger, and that is S. H I P burger, not shit burger, but I'm sure it's been called shit burger before. Anyway, I'll I'll read you his bio. I, I saved the little uh card I made for him because I thought it was funny. A uh, character named Greg from Ship Burger. Pronouns he him. Greg wanted to be a mechanic, but the ship needed a burger flipper. He's a titties enthusiast, and he's always searching for space weed. That that's my character. You know the type. Like, we've all worked with the Greg, and it was fun to roleplay as Greg. It was a good time. And Greg actually survived to the end of the roleplay. Um, I'm not going to give out spoilers in case you want to play that game, and I, I don't really know how RPGs work. I, I don't know if it's, like, a unique experience for everyone. I don't think it is. I, I think we were playing, like, the main campaign or something. Um, but... <laughs> My character made it to the end. In fact, everyone's character made it to the end, except my boyfriend's character. Uh, I was given the option to try to save my boyfriend's character, but Greg couldn't justify trying to do it. Like, Greg would have ended up dying if he would have tried. So, Greg left my boyfriend's character to die, and um, it was so exciting. It was a fun thing. I, I want to do more RPGs like that. It was a fun experience. I liked using my imagination like that. I will say that I'm quite jealous of this girl's bedroom, by the way. It has the best windows in the house, and it has its own private bathroom, which is something I don't necessarily give my sims a lot. I mean, sometimes when I do do it, it's for the primary bedroom, and I did do that here. I gave the primary bedroom a private bathroom, but but sometimes I neglect to give the kids a private bathroom, and I thought it'd be kind of realistic in a house like this to have another bedroom with a private bathroom attached to it and of course the older kid would get the private bathroom but there's enough bathrooms to go around in this house like nobody's gonna struggle getting ready in the morning which is sometimes a problem in sims games so i'm happy that all my sims who could potentially live in this house will be happy uh the problem is the house is really expensive i think it ends up being like 150,000 simoleons when i'm done with it don't quote me on that Um, so not all Sims families can afford it. Uh, if you want to give them a good mother load or two, they might be able to afford it, but, um, it's kind of like one of those houses that are just out of reach for an average Sim, and I think that's fine. Sometimes real life has houses that are not necessarily in reach for the average person, too, so... I will say I do record these voiceovers in batches. Like, this one, not so much. This one, I'm kind of recording, like, all at once, but I'm taking, like, little mini breaks in between the voice recording, and I just took a little mini break to playtest this build, and everything seems to be working all right. Uh, Even my sims are able to bring the food from the kitchen into the dining room and eat it, which I didn't think they would be able to do, so this build is ready. It's hot. It's ready for you to take out. It's hot to go. And it's available to download down below on my Patreon. That sounded better in my head. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna give them a chaperone reference or whatever, and it it just didn't work. Oh, another little thing that happened that I wanted to talk about is I saw a video on TikTok of chaperone. Um, A fan was asking her a question about The Sims, and I, I think the fan specified The Sims 4, but Chapel Roan literally says, no, I'm a Sims 2 double deluxe, and I was like, oh, like, sometimes I forget that people around my age, um, probably do like The Sims 2, because I hear so much people talking about The Sims 4, I, I kind of forget that there's some of us that like to play The Sims 2, and that some of these people might be celebrities, and it's weird, because The Sims 2 community is strong, like, that's one of the things I talk about in my video about the 10 reasons why I still play The Sims 2 in 2024. Like, we have a strong, albeit niche, community, but, like, there's quite a few of us, and I I guess sometimes I just forget that. Like, I I see all the people playing the game on Tumblr or whatever, and then I go out into the real world, and I forget that there's actual, like, human beings, like, behind these Tumblr profiles who actually play the game or have played the game in the past. I think she said she didn't have access to The Sims 2 right now, and, like, 
there are ways of getting in the game, Chapel. I could teach you. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Okay. I'm, I'm not that delusional, guys. But, like, even if you're not Chapel Roan, there, there are ways to get the game. You, you can still play in 2024. There's, like, really helpful YouTube videos. You shouldn't even ask me, like, how to get the game running. You should go find, like, it a cotton socks video on how to get the game running and follow her advice because like i i don't know what i'm doing my game is probably being held together by like two band-aids like um i'm i'm not the best when it comes to technology stuff but there are ways of getting this game and getting it running on modern pcs oh that's okay that one more thing i'm gonna rant about my bumble bff match who kind of said that it wasn't the vibe and left, right? Um, right before that, like, literally a day or two before, she said that she got, um, The Sims 2 working on her computer and she was gonna play it. And I was like, this is the dream. This is literally the dream. I want to have somebody I can talk about The Sims 2 with, right? And, and then she went and did that to me. Like, was The Sims 2 that offensive? Did you play it and realize, oh, this is kind of lame and decided to cut me off? Because that'd be kind of funny. I, I want to know. I want to know what happened. <laughs> and it was not even like I was like overwhelming her with The Sims or anything. Like I mentioned it in passing and she was like, oh, I'm going to try to get my husband to get The Sims 2 working or whatever. And I'm like, okay, cool. Right? Like it, I'm definitely overthinking it. it. It's in the past now, but I don't know. I I try to figure out where people are coming from and it's just, it's hard sometimes. Oh, also I wanted to mention it because I just did it, but uh, I edit these videos while doing the voiceover. It's a whole thing. And I just brightened up the video a little bit. Normally I just go with the default Sims lighting when I play The Sims 2, but I decided to try to be a little professional and brighten up the gameplay. And I want your guys' feedback. I, I don't know how many of you guys like made it to the end of this video, but if you did, I, I feel like I value your feedback more than the people who just kind of like left us before this moment, you know what I mean? So let me know if you like how this video is looking. Did you have to put on a pair of sunglasses to watch it? Is it too bright? Like, I want your feedback. I, I value your feedback. But I edited the video in a similar way as I edit the screenshots at the end of my speed builds, and I really like how it looks. I find the game on its own tends to look pretty dark. And the thing is, I could theoretically use reshade and fix this issue, but I, I don't like using reshade. It's just a personal preference. So I feel like this is like a good in-between fix for my, you know, brightness issues in The Sims. And if I do decide I like it, there's no guarantee I'll remember to do it for my next video. It's going to be something that we'll have to experiment with. I, I'm pretty scatterbrained and I might completely forget it, to do it on like most of my videos going forward. But I, I think it looks good. I, I need to see it on the whole YouTube side of things before I make my final decision. But like in my editing program, it looks good. Anyway, we are getting towards the end of the video now. I'm really impressed with myself that I continued to, uh, you know, complete this voiceover without getting mad. Because sometimes when I have these, like, longer builds, I get impatient. And at some points in the video, I kind of speed things up, I think, a little too fast. And it, it doesn't make it the best viewing experience in the world. Normally, I have my speed build set to four times speed, but sometimes I get impatient and want to, like, finish the video sooner, and I set the speed build to, like, five times or six times, and it's not a pleasant viewing experience, so I'm glad that I kind of remain consistent into my four times speed on this video. I feel like it's just a better viewing experience overall. You get to hear me talk for longer, which may be a positive for some of you guys, or... Most of you guys m might have me muted than listening to music right now. I, I don't know, but I'm just proud that I, like, put out a 40-minute build video because I really want to show you guys, like, what this game can do and how nice Sims houses can be, especially when it comes to The Sims 2 because we don't have a lot of representation for that on YouTube. Like, the majority of Sims channels are Sims 4, and I don't know. I, I like showing The Sims 2 some love showing you guys what The Sims 2 is capable of. Even if you play the game yourself, um, I hope you find inspiration from, you know, my builds. If you guys like the video, please give it a like. It really helps me out when it comes to the YouTube algorithm gods. And if you would like to see more Sims 2 content, subscribe to my channel. 
I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye guys.